Hey guys, Jason. And here recently there's been a lot of discussion on the forums on Reddit, usually by newcomers, asking, you know, what's the difference between solo mining and pool mining? And I myself had that same question, you know, when I started mining, you know, when I started researching two years ago, and still to this day when I decided, you know, what was best for me with my mining setup. So if you, if you think back to Bitcoin, you know, back in the day when it was just CPU mining on your Bitcoin QT wallet, everybody was a solo miner. You know, that was the only way to mine and it wasn't for almost a year before the GPU miner really came out and the script for GPU mining. So, you know, this whole start of things was, you know, in its infancy, you know, solo mining. But a as time went on, people said, well, you know, I might with my PC setup only find a block every 24 days. And, you know, that kind of that kind of stinks because it's it's a very luck factor. You know, you have to have very good luck, as they say in the Bitcoin mining community. You know, you have to have luck to find a, a block or a coin. And sometimes, you know, your luck isn't very good. So with the, instead of, you know, on your own solo mining, like with my solo setup, I have about 400 kilo hashes. And with 400 kilo, hash, kilo hashes in a, you know, in Litecoin, you know, trying to mine Litecoin, the chances of you finding a block is very, I might find one block a year if I'm lucky. You know, it's a very, very low probability. So, excuse me, what happens is, is I mine in a pool. So this pool looks up and it says, okay, well I have this many miners and each miner gets so many shares per amount of work they give. And these shares are kind of kept in a balance book. And then when the group, be that if I, find a, if I find a block, instead of me keeping that block, I share it to the pool. And there's been a lot of questions of, well, can't you just you know, pull that block for yourself? No, actually the way the pool works is you never find out that you found the block. The pool finds out you find the block. So that way that a user can't you know, just say, oh, uh, hey, I found the block. I'd like to keep that. Instead, they never know they found it. The pool knows they found it. So then the pool takes this block and the reward from that block uh, alongside transaction fees added to the reward fee. And so they take this amount and they divide it by the amount of shares that they have given out. And so say I have 25 shares, I get you know, that many percent worth of the entire reward. And this is a lot more efficient because it allows a very you know, cinematic view to things. It, instead of getting one you know, like randomly, I might get one you know, in 26 days and have to wait for another 300 days to find a block. You know, I'm getting rewards every single day. And while I might not be getting you know, as many rewards as I would like, solo mining, it ends up to become more profitable and more stable than mine with a pool. So really what um, you know, devolves from this is trying to figure out what pool is best for you. Usually, like with Bitcoin, you have a couple different factors that you want to look into. First of all, the pool percentage fee. Um, most you know, pools will do anywhere between 1% to 3%, with some pools doing a 0%, you know, because they, they, they completely run off donations. So you know, one of the things you want to take into factor, especially if you're a smaller one, is consider how much you're giving up to use that pool. You know, like I said, usually between one and three percent. Also, for stability, you want a good mining pool. You want something that's reliable on a good server. Usually, the end user is not going to be able to figure out what the server specs are. But one good, you know, value to look this up is to look and see how many mega hashes or sometimes even giga hashes that the pool supports. So what you might do is say you're looking up, you know, I don't know, Litecoin. And the pool has, and this is all hypothetical, let me remind you, but say the pool has you know, 900 mega hashes, and the entire network of Litecoin is one giga hash, well that means 90% of the miners are on this one pool that I just mentioned. And so therefore you can kind of infer that that is a very unique, very good, you know, very stable pool to use, and that's what I would recommend you use. For instance, myself, one of the things I do is I found the biggest pool for the, the coin I'm particularly mining right now, and I wouldn't mind with that. Now, for about 24 hours, the, the pool went down for maintenance and actually switched over to a smaller pool, and I just haven't, in my own time, been able to switch back over yet. But that is what I recommend. You know, so, you know, if you're asking me, you want a kind of a, a in clip of what to do, I would recommend, you know, really, even if you have a huge large setup, like 20% of the market, in most cases, sometimes it's easier, unless you're really, really sophisticated, to just pull mine. And, you know, like I said, usually picking the one with the largest pool and, you know, what you feel is a, you know, real, an okay pool fee. You know, some people I know, like myself personally, I don't mind paying a 3% pool fee if it's on a very reliable, very secure server versus maybe paying a 1% you know, pool fee when it's going to be a, clap, a crappy server that shuts down every 12 hours and I have to restart my miner. So that's just something to look into, very interesting to look into, but again, in result, I'd say probably 90% of the time, if not all the time, you want to go with pool mining and you want to look for a very, very good pool setup. 
Anyway, guys, I hope this helps you set up your mind and figure out exactly what you want to do. And have a great day.